Thank you. A lot of my friends are getting married lately, and it's got me thinking about the whole marriage thing. And starting with the proposal, the way that men do it, it's normally some shit in which they take a woman, you know, for a romantic meal, and then we walk on the beach, and then proposing in front of the church if they're going to get married. And not when my mate did it, over a bargain bucket in KFC. But, and then when a woman, like, it has become engaged, all her friends want to see the ring, and they all go, oh, the ring, it's so pretty, I wish I was getting married. I'm like, you, getting married? You're a fucking idiot. You think the red light district is anything with a red light? <laughs> and the friends, they always want to be part of the planning process, which historically has been fine, because it means that us blokes could just take a back seat. But nowadays, more and more women want their partners to be part of the planning process. Don't they understand? A man's role in the wedding is to show up, pay for it, and then get screwed over in a divorce settlement. <laughs> the only thing a man should decide is who actually gets to be the best man. Now, this could be a bit tricky if you have loads of friends. So when I choose to think of it as like a job interview, you know, what are my strengths and weaknesses? Well, my strengths would be organising social events and being able to consume large amounts of alcohol. But my weaknesses would be crying after consuming large amounts of alcohol. <laughs> but what is the job role of the best man? It's to make sure the bloke gets there in time for his wedding and the plan is stag do. But what do you, where do you take a man for a stag do? And the answer is, it doesn't really matter where you take them, just as long as at the end of the night he ends up tied naked to a lamppost with a dildo up his ass. <laughs> what's, what's, what's the key thing to, to a best man? And it is trust. Sorry? They are. But the the key thing to a best man is. Is it in yet? Is it in your hands, right? Has them on your cocks. The key thing to a best man is the trust. Because you've got to trust the men to keep uh, to keep the ring safe. But they don't like it when you're inventive in doing so. Like times for string round the ring and swallow it, so on their magical, magical day, you can pull it out just like a tampon. <laughs> Thirsty, they've had a long, they've had a long time, they've walked in the last time. The, the role of the best man is insignificant compared to the importance of the wedding dress. Because traditionally, a wedding dress is white as it signifies um, like a woman's innocence and virginity, which is why there's never been one worn in Newcastle. <laughs> <laughs> and a wedding dress, it's, you know, it's, it can cost up to three grand. That's three grand for a dress you're going to wear once. Unless, of course, you get divorced, then you might as well wear it to the first date. <laughs> and then you've got to also plan the wedding. You know, when do you want it? Do you want the wedding in the snow, in the winter, so you have the snow? Or do you want it in the spring, so you have the colour? The key thing to remember is, you live in England, you're guaranteed shit weather. And then you've also got to plan, you know, who you want to invite. Because you want to invite people who aren't going to ruin the wedding. So what normally happens is, is you have the bride's family and friends sitting on the left side of the church, and the groom's parents sitting on the other. <laughs> And you know what I do actually when about weddings? Is why does everyone go, oh, when the woman takes off the veil? You see that person every day. It's not some big reveal. You don't do that other things you see every day. Oh, it's my shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then the vows as well, you know, for better or for worse, for in sickness and in health. These should be changed to be more accurate, for better or for worse. From sickness and in health. For now you can't afford to leave her, for now you are fucked. <laughs> and then after the ceremony, the bride always throws the bouquet. And the um, bride always throws the bouquet. And what she does, before she does it, she uh, yeah, gets her friends to gather around like a flock of pigeons. And they all go, mine, 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 trying to catch the bouquet. Honestly, they were flapping around so much and quite slight, they just didn't take off and land, they went out on the car. <laughs> and why do they do this? Yep, you guessed it, it's another bloody tradition. Because if you're the girl that catches it, you're the next one to get married. So when a girl catches it, she immediately looks towards her boyfriend, and, and he then smiles awkwardly. 
It's made even worse if your mum catches it and looks at you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've been drunk. Oh, thank you. Yes. <laughs>